All right guys, Pete here with Green Dreams and uh, I wasn't gonna make you a video on this job. We're doing a little bit of a permaculture yard makeover, I guess you could say. So this was uh, originally a permaculture food forest. Really just the homeowner that lives here doesn't have a lot of time to maintain it. She wanted to have more natives, more flowering species, less sweet potatoes, less of the wild look. So we are taking out some tithonia. Um, we're adding some natives, like I said, some different fruit trees, moving some fruit trees, adding some mulch, adding some mulch paths, um, putting in some shell paths, brought the machine back with me today. And I just thought this was kind of a cool makeover, like it's gonna look much different when we pull out of here. It's not our typical job where we're coming in, it's a yard of all grass. You know, we're ripping it out and we're installing an edible landscape. We're taking a permaculture landscape that was maybe a little bit more on the messy side, I guess you could say, and making it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, making it a little bit prettier, making it something, you know, the neighbors are gonna to wanna to emulate. It's got solar panels on the roof, they've got rain catchment, really cool little setup. And I was like, man, I need to break out the camera, so I wanna show you all this. Hope you're uh, probably wondering what's going on with my new shirt. Um, this is actually a hoodie, like a fishing style hoodie. We got some new shirts recently made, and this is really just to protect my ears and neck from the uh, intense Florida heat. We got them for my guys. Everybody's been loving them. Got them for the nursery girl. Um, been very popular. They work down here great in the summertime. So. so here's that property, and you can see out here in the front yard, there's actually another contractor here doing some pavers in the backyard. And there's all kinds of edibles. So there's moringa, there's citrus trees, there's bananas, there's mulberries, um, there's loquat, there's a star fruit, there's a longin, there's also some ornamental stuff. And you can see the sweet potatoes in here along the front. And you know, sweet potatoes, obviously one of the most nutritious crops in the world, but the downside being in the winter time, they do look a little bit on the messy side. They might not be as pretty, not as inviting to the neighborhood. So. This will actually have mostly natives back in it. We'll have a shell path coming up behind that and kind of connecting up to the house here on either side. So I'll probably pull the rig out of the way for you guys and show you we're gonna be cleaning up this entire brush line behind it here, uh, kind of like right on the back side of the truck. There's some uh, invasive cherry laurel in there, a couple of native cabbage bombs. That's just clean, getting cleaned up. And we're taking the brush out of here and we're gonna be adding some more shade tolerant natives in this area we're going to move that star fruit to this area it's a little bit more wind protected so here's that cherry laurel i was talking about that's got to go mexican sunflower got cut back and boys are here getting after it so yeah we're getting a little bit ripped out of here there was a big mexican sunflower there you can kind of see up here on the roof, lots of solar panels and then a really cool yoga deck. So this is kind of like right off that side of the house. When you're coming out, you can see we have a large stack of our uh, recycled edging. That's actually gonna go around all these bed edges. And we've done a little bit of cleanup in the backyard. Let me show you what's growing on back here. And this was a big weedy mess two days ago. We've pulled all the weeds out, kind of done some pruning back here. We're gonna add some mulch, and like I mentioned, there's gonna be a shell pathway coming in around this side, connecting to underneath over there with that pergola, and we'll have a bit of a shell landing. All kinds of fruit trees back here. There's olives, moringa, star fruit, um, perennial vegetables, katuk, saranam cherry, some loquats. Woo! Yes, that is a Tithonia of Diversifolia coming out of the ground. Um, grows too fast. Not everybody can handle this, you know, massive species of chop and drop. Something that grows five to six foot a month. Um, that is work to keep up with. So it's a great plant in the landscape. I highly suggest it. Be prepared for the growth though. All right, just got done with the machine, scraping all of the sweet potatoes out. The bed was actually really high. Um, combination of just a lot of mulch. Um, sweet potatoes being in here, velvet beans, um, some other different cover crops actually. So we've kind of scraped that all the way down. We're gonna be adding natives through this whole bed, adding some more loquats, adding some more olives, and a shell path connecting to the house, connecting to the backyard, and going around to the front door. We wanted to try to incorporate that side step, but it doesn't look like that's gonna work. There's a big old palm tree stump there that is not going anywhere. So some cool elements I wanted to point out to y'all here. The, uh, the homeowner has like a community compost bin. You can kind of see it over there. And she said a bunch of the neighbors actually come over, they put all their compost in there. 
and then over here by the front of the property i think there's like a uh, a community library that has a bunch of growing books and permaculture books in it i thought that was pretty cool i'm gonna show you guys what's going on in there right now hold tight all right what's going on dude what's we got on? the uh, little free library here oh and nonprofit organization okay what do we got here james and the giant peach okay Pretty cool, so a little community library going on here. Take a book, leave a book type situation. You gonna do story time with Green Dreams? Yeah, you ready for that, dude? Dirt. All right, what's going on with story time, dude? You tell me. Let's read the gluten-free cookbook. Gluten-free cookbook, uh-oh. All right, we got some yellow uh, Barbados cherries up here in front of Ryan. He's finishing weeding this little bed along here. This bed's gonna get mimosa and peanut. Um, we ended up taking all the tithonia out around the banana pit. The client just doesn't have the time for the chop and drop, so they said all Tithonia must go. So she's busy with the kids. She just got a young little, you know, a newborn here. So she's got plenty of things to keep her busy rather than chopping and dropping at this time. You can always bring Mexican sunflower back into the landscape. This little area I have to scrape out. You can see even Ryan that helps me trucks leaving. Um, Ryan is a bit of a scavenger. He has a farm up in North Florida. He's gonna be taking home some of the sweet potatoes. He's gonna be taking home the Mexican sunflower. Really nothing goes to waste when Ryan's around. So that's great. So yeah, we've got this little area to scrape out along right here. I'm gonna do that in the morning. Finish scraping out the center of that mulch path. And I'd say by Monday, We'll be mulching the backyard. By Tuesday, we'll be putting some plants in. Wednesday, Thursday, next week, we'll start to have the shell going in in the paths. And this whole place is coming together. All right, guys, so I'm back here on Friday. This is day three here on this Seminole Heights project. And you can see there's some puddles. Uh, definitely had some rain last night. There's a little bit of a mess out here. Got the last of the scraping to do in the front yard. And we'll be done excavating these beds and preparing for new shell paths and native landscaping. So I wanted to get you guys some footage while the lighting wasn't so harsh. Yesterday it was definitely brutal out early in the morning. Kind of show you what this place is looking like before we finish the cleanup. So we got a area to finish up down there by the truck and up along the house and all the way around the banana pit. So we gotta scrape this curb and take this down the rest of the way. All right guys, so day four on this Seminole Heights project and we're just starting to lay out some plants here along the fence. And you can see this is an understory situation with a little bit of dappled light from these overstory cabbage palms. So we're putting the standard firebush and some shampoo ginger over here along the fence. And as we move down and get into a little more sun, we'll have some coral honeysuckle kind of growing up on the fence here. Some of these plants are plants that we transplanted from down there at that end. So there's some dwarf everbearing mulberry, longin, and then we started to lay out some of the species that we're adding into this area, like sweet almond, vitex, um, obviously lots of flowering species, lots of gallardia getting laid out, a couple of olives, a um, couple more loquats. So we have a sequence of loquat, vitex, loquat, vitex, loquat, vitex, kind of coming all the way down this front strip. And as you can see, got the fresh organic compost ready to go. A couple more bags of the organic fertilizer, some of the biochar, and just kind of starting to get the rest of that epic edging in all the way along here. They're on these front beds. And not typical, but we've been getting some rain. Not, you know, April is usually a really, really dry month. Um, we got rained on last night, we got rained on the day before, so it's kind of cramped our style a little bit here work-wise. But you can see there'll be a little path kind of coming out to the road over here. That's all gonna be inlaid with weed mat and shell. And then it'll be a crushed shell, like just a nice kind of, uh, I'll show you the finished product, but something you can walk on. Down along here, we're gonna add some flowering species and we excavated all the way up over here to the driveway. So this will be weed mat meeting the driveway, shell landing heading out into the landscape. I ended up cleaning up this citrus tree a little bit the other day. And we've got a lot of salvias, um, maybe three different varieties of salvias. That's Gallardia in there behind that and a couple of cat whiskers. So not gonna film much for you guys today. I'll do a little quick follow up at the end of the day. I actually gotta go grab some clumping grasses from 
my supplier in Largo. I was out at the farm and I'll be back here to lay out some plants. So hold tight. All right guys, back here at this Seminole Heights project and we just wrapped this one up. And this is a really cool kind of revamp of a original intent of a permaculture design. Um, kind of got a little bit out of control. The client wanted something a little bit more orderly, something a little nicer, something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, something the neighbors would want to emulate, something that you know people are gonna see and ask who did that. So that's what's happened here. Um, client is really awesome to work with. I mean, they've got solar hot water. They've got solar panels growing on up there. Um, and obviously uh, half edible, half native kind of zero scape. Um, you know, there's a, a decent amount of fruit trees here, perennial vegetables, natives. So I wouldn't quite call this like a food forest. This is definitely more along the line of that ecological landscaping, but it is gonna be a little bit of a forest once it fills in here. So most of these species are half edible, half native, you know, useful, medicinal. Um, Bird of Paradise was already here, so that one doesn't count. A couple of the plants obviously were already here, the citrus tree, um, some of the bananas, the moringa, the fig. And the citrus does not look too bad. It actually has some really nice new growth on it, but some of the old growth does look a little bit rough. So we're at the back of the property here and I have Gallengal and Lesser Gallengal kind of going against the fence. As we come out, we use the full-size native firebush, lots of uh, sunshine mimosa. There's also some shampoo ginger planted in here. It was dormant when it went in, so it's still not up yet. Um, you're seeing some transplanted trees over here. This is a transplanted everbearing mulberry, longin, everbearing mulberry that are all kind of, let's say, decapitated looking. Um, over here towards the back, we've got the full-size firebush again. And then up against the fence, we've got the coral honeysuckle. We'll eventually end up growing on there, kind of covering the fence, bringing in more beneficial insects you can kind of see. There's a few flowers on that one right here. Definitely a pretty native vining species. A um, couple of sweet almonds in here for flowers and fragrance as the system establishes. Really liking this tick plant. We've been using a lot more of these lately. Love the yellow flowers. A lot of them were really covered when we first put them in. Um, existing papaya was already here. Um, all the way down along the roadside edge, we used perennial peanut. So that's filling in really nice. Solar panel, solar hot water over here on the roof. We've got an olive tree on either side of the entry, kind of coming up into that side yoga deck, kind of behind that awesome bamboo wall. Really love that. This is an existing citrus that was here. Um, we used a couple of the Vitex bushes, really nice. Purple flowers, you know, six, seven months out of the year. They do go a little bit deciduous in the, uh, in the winter time, but for the most part, they look good you know, nine months out of the year, unlike a crepe myrtle, which really only looks good maybe that one month while it's flowering. So I definitely like that one, even though it still goes deciduous. We used all different types of tropical sage, native gallardia, kind of on those edges of the pass. It did add a couple of loquats. So I believe that the end one we planted, that one we relocated, that one we planted. So the ones on the ends are grafted. I think that center one's probably a seedling. It was a large banana pit up there. She wanted more of kind of like a seating area inside of there. So we've cleaned it out. I think they're eventually going to add a bench or something. Actually came today to put my little uh, yard sign out. She said uh, every car that's been driving by has been asking who did the landscaping, how much it costs, you know, and I love that when we do a job like this in kind of like a, you know, downtown typical neighborhood, people start asking, you know, what's growing on? What are you doing? What are you planting? Who did that? So. This is how they'll find us instead of having to ask Rose all the time. So there's that big banana pit. Along there we have lots of different salvias. There was existing pineapples. The Barbados cherries were already here. These yellow Barbados cherries were also here. Um, we added the Gallardias along the front. And something I'll point out, this is a no irrigation uh, install. So it's being hand watered for probably the first 30 days. And after that, you know, we should be getting close to rainy season and the system will be kind of taking off on its own. So we used black weed mat underneath these paths, plastic recycled edging along all the edges, and then used the crushed shell as a base. Existing fig tree, um, existing citrus, probably a seedling judging by all of the thorns on it. Existing guava, you can kind of see that big pit. 
It's not really dug into a pit, but it is a pit. An existing banana. The uh, large white bird of paradise was also here. And we just have all different types of native flowering species here. And this is gonna look like way better once it fills in. Like we're still in the first week after install. You know, once we get into rainy season, maybe I'll even do a follow up here. This one looks pretty epic. Really digging this deck, stained, really nice sails. Um, shade sails are looking beautiful. Looks like we got a purple possum variety of the passion fruit growing on here. I actually noticed some that are down here that are almost ripe. Pretty epic. Ooh. Oh, passion fruit for days. Definitely loving this uh, added privacy element that the bamboo gives you. I think that's really cool. I'm actually getting ready to start experimenting with some treating in the, of the bamboo here at my own farm. So um, these bougainvilleas were here. We fertilized them and add some compost. The idea is that they will end up growing up over this trellis, giving them a flowering element. We did add some uh, tick plant. We added a sweet almond that'll kind of fill the center for some color. And then I believe there's some uh, cat whiskers down there. They were cut back. They're definitely pretty small right now. They need to grow in a bit. And heading back here into the backyard. In the back, we just really cleaned this up. We mulched, we added a few things. Um, we did not use the curbing on the path back here. We added some uh, edible Turk's cap hibiscus over here in this bed. There's a pink variety. There's a red variety. Um, kind of that parlor maple hibiscus here. Uh, we mulched the entire backyard. We pruned the entire backyard. We fertilized the entire backyard. Really cool little space right here. A couple of hammocks, seating area. I like that. Put a ring in around the fire pit. Added some shell. This way it's kind of dragging that shell element out into the landscape. And there's bamboo back here. There's moringas back here. There's star fruit back here. Really cool elements to the backyard. And let's see what's going on over here. I don't know if you all know this one. This is not very common to see in Florida. This is actually cotton. Pretty cool. Not something I run into all the time. I'm seeing chaya, cassava. Um, up against the house, there's some uh, galangal. Gal. Here's another uh, moringa. Looks like uh, someone took up home in here. We've got a bird nest. It's that time of year where all the birds are kind of making nests here everywhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, hey. So over here in this area, you'll notice a pergola that has a shower on it. So some of the leftover pavers from the paver pad that was installed actually just got put in that area. But when we got here, there was no pavers over here. This was just all dirt. Um, client really wanted an area. She's got a newborn child to be able to play. We were originally gonna put some grass in over there by the road and put some irrigation on it. But after really reevaluating that and looking into the maintenance and the water, you know, and just really how wasteful it could be. It was worth spending the couple extra bucks on this small patch of artificial turf because it doesn't require any water. It doesn't require any maintenance and it's giving her that place for, you know, the young child under a year old to play. So definitely a nice green element to the landscape. I'm digging it. Here's the pavers that were just done on the packed porch. And there's a whole wall of Moringa here going all the way down. Um, along the bottom, we've actually added some sage for some color. You can kind of see we've got multiple varieties. This is a pinkish colored variety, reddish colored variety. I have a purple colored variety, all different colors. But I have to say, I know it's plastic, um, but I'm kind of digging the uh, artificial turf. You know, the fact that there's a thick weed mat under there, they'll never get any weeds. It really did kind of fill that, that missing space, you know, that space for the kid to play. Um, you know, it does give a really nice contrast when you put the drone up, I mean, it sticks out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Be sure to pound that bell so you get those notifications. And most importantly, pound dirt.